looking now at this build section here. So right up until the first chorus drops. And we're gonna see what happens to some of the instruments along the way. So in the last video, we, uh, we saw how these two synths were made. They're both ES2 synths, and now we're gonna see what happens to them over time. So initially, they're quite subdued. As time goes on, they become more intense, more intense still. And so finally, at the very end, they've created this big tension, which is then released with a drop. So how does that happen? I've placed, first of all, a low cut filter on the high synth, so this is the one that plays this line. Okay, and what it's doing, the purpose it's serving, is initially at the start, it's cutting out some of the bass, which makes the synth sound a little bit brittler. Okay, so it's good for the start because we don't want to have the full power there straight away. And I'm also automating it. So I'm automating the cutoff frequency. It begins quite high, so all the bass below 2500 hertz is getting cut out. Then over time, it comes down so that the bass is allowed back in. I'm using automation to do this. So you can click automation in the toolbar, or you can hit A on the keyboard to show the automation lines. It does the same thing. And you can see here, I've drawn in nodes. So you click to draw a node and then drag it around to do whatever you want. I've started up here, 2500 hertz. Then over time, it slowly comes down, comes down, comes down, till the bass is all in, and just gives that synth a little bit more power. So that's not all that's happening. Uh, there's, there's some other stuff too. So I'm also automating the release on the ES2 synthesizer. So if you look inside the synth, in the bottom right corner, you've got envelope three, that's the volume envelopes, amplitude envelopes, and the release control changes the length of notes. So if you've got short release, the notes are all gonna be very short. If you've got long release, the notes are all gonna be really long. So I've got this happening over time through automation. Uh, you'll find it in the ES2 under envelopes, envelope three, release. So it starts off short, gradually getting longer, getting longer. Then in these last four bars here, it suddenly takes a real turn up. So we get this really intense sound at the very end. I've got it happening in both synths, but more or less parallel. Same thing happening. And finally, I'm also automating the low pass filter in the ES2 synth. So the low pass filter is the same as a high cut filter. Initially, it's cutting out a lot of the high. Then as we go along, we're cutting out less and less. Less the synths are more intense. More and more and more and more intense. Until at the very end, you got this really bright, sharp sounding synth. So between the release and the, and the low pass filter um, coming up and allowing more of the travel through, you get this really intense sound. I've also got these symbols happening. So there's one at the start. Okay, then as we go along, it happens in reverse and then forwards. Okay, so it just allows us to have more tension again. So you can find these symbol, symbol sounds. There's a couple of different ways of getting them, but uh, just you'll find them in the Finder under Macintosh HD, uh, in the Library, Application Support, Logic, then Ultrabeat Samples. You'll find all the samples that make up those Ultrabeat kits, and you can play them as AIFs, and you can bring them in to your projects like that. So I found a symbol in one of the drum kits and dropped it in. When you've got your symbol facing forward, double click on it, You'll see it in the sample editor, and I've made a copy of it and then just reversed that one. So it's the same cymbal sound, just first of all, it plays backwards, and then it plays forwards afterwards. 